Simple bank system. This is a popular coding interview problem asked at Capital One, but also Airbnb, Coinbase, and Dropbox. The description says you have been tasked with writing a program for a popular bank that will automate all its incoming transactions, transfer, deposit, and withdraw. The bank has N accounts numbered from 1 to N. The initial balance of each account is stored in a zero indexed integer array balance with the I plus one account having an initial balance of the balance at index I. Execute all the valid transactions. A transaction is valid if the given account numbers are between 1 and N, and the amount of money withdrawn or transferred from is less than or equal to the balance of the account. Implement the bank class, which will contain a constructor, a transfer method, deposit method, and withdraw method. So we are given an array of balances representing the money that is in each account in the bank. In this example, account 1 starts with $10, Account two starts with $100, account three starts with $20, and so on. We need to implement three methods in the bank class, transfer, withdraw, and deposit. If we withdraw $10 from account three, we should return true because this is a valid operation. The new balance of account three would be 20 minus 10, which is 10. Transferring $20 from account five to account one, this should also return true since it's a valid operation. Both account five and account one are valid accounts. To perform this operation, we withdraw the money from account five, so 30 minus 20 equals 10, and then deposit the money into account one, so 10 plus 20 which equals 30. Depositing $20 into account five is also valid. So we do 10 plus 20 equals 30. Transferring $15 from account three to account four is not valid because account three does not have enough money in its account. It only has $10. So we return false. Finally, we attempt to withdraw $50 from account 10 but this returns false because account 10 is not a valid account number. Now, at first glance, this problem is not that hard. We're performing addition and subtraction on account balances, and there needs to be some validation on withdrawing. Pretty simple. So you might be wondering, why is this problem marked as a medium then? Although leak code does not mention this, I think the reason why it's marked as medium and also why it is currently asked by so many big tech companies is because there is an expectation to implement this banking system logic in a safe and concurrent way. In other words, we want our solution to be able to handle simultaneous executions of shared resources. And in our case, these shared resources are account balances. So how does this work in practice? Let's say two requests came into the bank at the same time to withdraw from the same account. Both transactions will be operating on a shared resource specifically the balance of account one. So it's possible that for both requests, the validation to check if the account balance can withdraw the amount succeeds. As a result, one request subtracts 10 down to zero and the second request subtracts down to negative 10, which should never be possible. We can fix this using locks, a mechanism to enforce isolated execution for checking and mutating state. Using locks, if those two requests came in at the same time again, the first withdrawal would execute while the second withdrawal would have to wait until the first one finishes. So let's implement the code for this solution. We're given a bank class and in the constructor is an array of longs containing the balance of each account, and we need to implement transfer, deposit, and withdraw. We have to imagine these operations on our bank class will be happening simultaneously with multiple threads, which means we need a thread safe way of storing this data. We can use a concurrent hash map in Java as a result, where the key is the account number and the value is an account class. In our account class, we can store the balance tied to that account. So this is the shared state that I was talking about. And then we can also create a lock for each account object. You might be wondering, why would we create a new lock for every account object? Why not just have one lock for all instances? The reason why is because we don't want one account to block the execution of money for other unrelated accounts. Having a one-to-one -one relationship between lock to account object will ensure separate accounts can perform withdrawals and deposits in parallel without blocking one another. So first deposit, we take the money as input, we call lock, and inside of our try, we increase the balance and then unlock in the finally block. Essentially, all this is doing is ensuring that the shared state, the balance, 
cannot be accessed more than once at the same time for this specific amount. Similarly, in withdraw, we take the money as input. The try block checks if the current balance has enough to withdraw. If it doesn't, just return false. Otherwise, we decrease the balance and then unlock. Now, if we go back to the bank class, starting with transfer, we need to ensure that these accounts exist and ensure that we can actually withdraw the first account. If we can't, we just return false. Then we fetch account two and deposit the money. For deposit, we check if the account exists. If it doesn't, return false then deposit the money using the method we created in our account class. Finally, for withdraw, check if the account exists. If it doesn't, return false. Then withdraw using the method in our account class. And that's it. Our time complexity is going to be constant for each method since we're using a hash map to update our balances for each account. Our space complexity is big O of N, where N is the number of accounts being stored in our concurrent hash map. If this video was helpful for you, please like and subscribe. I really want to grow this channel more and could use your help. Also, if you go to algoswithmichael.com and sign up for the newsletter, you can get access to free lessons relating to the sliding window algorithm. So definitely check that out if you're interested. That's all I have for you today. Catch you next time.